You can take them off the plastic if you need. Don't let this young woman's death be in vain. For anyone that's watching these clips, make up your mind today. Am I going to stand up and help out and be heard so another mother like Miss Jeffries does not have to go through this? This is Miss Jeffries' only child. I'm appealing to you mothers as a mother myself. Don't let this child's death be in vain. We should be outraged. We should all be asking questions of what's really going on here in D.C. She's out here grieving still over her only child, gathering information to try to find out what is happening. Why is our system for youth rehabilitation services breaking down? Don't let this child's death be in vain. My thing is the whole, it's the juvenile system, period. Because, you know, I think everyone has that emphasis on, you know, I'm focused on DYRS. It's not just DYRS. Like I said, it's, it's all the agencies that are supposed to be monitoring offenders, period. Whether it's from the juvenile standpoint or the adult standpoint. Sometimes they interject, they cross, they meet up. And sometimes it's multiple agencies that are supposed to be monitoring individuals. So like I said, yeah, there's definitely a problem with DYRS as well as CSOSA and pre-trial services. It's a problem, period. And that's what I don't understand. You know, when, when I came here, I've been in the metropolitan area here in D.C. for some time. I never knew that... You know, to buy a home in D.C. meant that I was supposed to be padded up and, you know, go out like I'm, I'm in combat. That's not what I signed up for. I don't think any other citizen in Washington, D.C. signed up for that. You know, I'm not sure where these weapons are coming from. We don't need any more weapons. Like I said, the young people need to go back to, you know, the good old days. You know, you can converse. You can, you can handle your dispute in a, in a non-violent, non-physical way. And if you really feel that you have to, you know, duke it out, then do just that. You know, have, you know, if you feel that you want to be physical and you want to punch each other, okay, one person and the other individual, if you just can't dispute it, deal with that individual. That's right. You know, you don't need 20 people jumping on a young man on a metro because you want his tennis shoes. You don't need three people gunning down somebody because you want to rob them. You don't need four individuals shooting into a crowd because you're pissed off at somebody. And instead of the individual who was shot on his knees thanking God that he survived an attack like that, he decides he wants to wreak havoc. He wants to be a part of the problem rather than the solution. He should have been thanking God that he survived. He should have been talking to the young people in his community. He should have been saying, you know what, I need to thank my lucky stars. I need to thank God. I'm going to change my life, and I'm going to talk to individuals, and we're going to get out here and, and turn this negative into a positive. Yeah. But no, he didn't do that. He decides that, you know what, I was shot, and I'm going to make sure I do more shooting. And, and it's, it's just ridiculous, you know, I, I, the pain, the hole that I have to deal with and live with every day is ridiculous. The only way I see my daughter is in pictures of my home. You know, everything I see my child is associated with death. Not that she was a bright young lady, not that she was, you know, going off to Japan to study this summer, going to college this fall at 16, not that, you know, she was a track star, nothing that associates with my, um, life. For my child. Everything now is pertaining to death. I don't hear her voice anymore. No more phone calls. And we had countless phone calls throughout the day. Text messages. The last text message I received from my daughter.